I would say that the title of it shouldn't be Avalanche. It should be Tegoshi Yuya has opinion that no one asked for. Hi, welcome to Matcha Tea Time, where I give you my opinion about stuff that happened in the J-pop industry slash community, uh, whether you like it or not. This time around, I will be talking about Tegoshi Yuya and everything that happened, including him, <laughs> during this year, 2020. I've been talking about the different events during the live stream that I've been doing on my channel, but I know a lot of you are not watching them. Recently, he released a book. People were having a lot of opinions about that, asked me my own opinion. So I decided to compile everything into one single video, give you my thoughts and opinion. And as usual, before I get into the subject itself, I would like to put out a little disclaimer. If you don't know who Tegoshi Yuya is, I made a full presentation um, during his time with News. I will link this video down in the description so you can just have a look and see who is News, who is Tegoshi Yuya before we get into the tea. Now, on 19th of June 2020, the news dropped <laughs> news about Tegoshi leaving uh, not only his group, News, but also uh, Johnny's Entertainment, which was his agency for the past 20-25 years. When the bomb dropped, it came out as a surprise but not really. So when two members of News decided to leave the group, namely Yamashita Itomoisa and Ryo Nishikido, Tegoshi mentioned during his several interviews that he was thinking about leaving the group as well, but he decided to stay because of the fan. Up until 2020, it was kind of hinted that he still wanted to leave the group, but he never took any action on it. The way it was done, however, this year, that was kind of a problem. It was more about how he left and the timing that he decided to do it, more than the fact that he's leaving the group in itself. Now, before leaving, he was actually suspended from any activities. During the pandemic and during the state of emergency, when everybody was promoting the stay at home message and everybody was working from home as much as possible, Tegoshi was actually caught out in drinking parties once in April, and the second time in May. Following the second scandal, he was basically removed from the charity event that the agency was planning and he was also suspended from any activities until further notice. June was the time when the agency decided to held uh, several concerts online and live streamed. Following the suspension of Tegoshi, however, the group decided to perform as three members and also during this time decided to pay a little homage by not singing uh, his part during the last song that they were performing. That concert happened on the 18th of June. 19th of June, out of nowhere, that Tegoshi just broke his contract with the with the agency and is leaving both the agency and the group. So obviously that caused a lot of drama. On the same day, he also opened an official Twitter account and confirmed online that he will be holding a press conference to just explain everything that happened, why he decided to leave. He also opened a YouTube channel and the press conference was also live streamed on his YouTube channel. Now, in my personal opinion, like I mentioned, for someone who has been in the in the agency for about 20 years, it's only fair and normal to want to do something else. So so him leaving the group, especially because it was something that he was already talking about for several years, it's not really a surprise, it's not really a real shock, it's completely understandable, but the way it was done sounded a bit messy, a, a bit confusing as well, and it was not following the pattern of how talents were usually leaving the agency. Several people have left the agency before him, but usually they will announce it with the group, they will make a, a video, and they will announce it on the, on TV, and they will give a date that would be the last day during the agency or as part of the group, and after that, live their own life. This is not what happened with Tegoshi. It's basically he left and the contract was broke on the day that it was published in the news. There was no notice and it was just after that the three of the members were holding the concert and it was hinted that maybe the members were not even aware that this was happening. Now moving on to the press conference. This was held on the 23rd of June. It was scheduled to last an hour and actually lasted two hours. I sit through the two hours and I have a lot of things to say. To me there are two separate issues that are discussed and these two are very separate and I have problem with one of them. Let me explain what I mean by that. To me breaking the state of emergency is actually a real problem. That was my main issue with Tegoshi. I didn't have any problem with him leaving. So it's only fair that he wants to do something else at 32 years old. But during this state of emergency, he was still a member of the agency. He was still a representative of the company. And from everything that he explained during this press conference, there's nothing that would really justify going out. One thing as well that came across maybe the wrong way is the way Tegoshi presents himself. He can come across as somehow arrogant. It's not the first time that he's caught up in a, in a scandal. And every time this happens, 
there's always some kind of explanation to just work his way out without apologizing or taking any accountability for what he has done. That's my impression over the years. This is also what happens during this state of emergency situation. He was always going around and saying that I was not out to drink with, uh, with women. It just happened that it was a business meeting to work out on, my, on what I would do after I leave the agency. I wanted to plan my future. It was a business meeting to discuss some charity work that I wanted to, to do. And yes, there were girls here that happened to be part of the meeting. And yes, we happened to drink because we were out as well. But you know, it was only like business casual. So I have no issues with that in terms of why you would hold this meeting. But this doesn't mean that you have to leave your house. It was not an emergency for you to leave your house. This could have been done online like everybody else was doing. And it didn't happen only once, it happened twice. Once in April and once in May. So you know exactly what you were doing. Five minutes after that he was saying, I was also talking with business partners that were based overseas through Zoom. So you know that the platform exists, you know how to use it, you know it's possible. You made a conscious decision to go out because somehow you didn't see any problem with it. So to me, this is why people can consider that this was an arrogant behavior because you put yourself in a situation when you just tell the world or present yourself to the world as someone that is above the law. The word of the government should be higher than the word from the agency. And saying that, well, my manager know about it and he didn't say anything, you are 32 years old. You should take responsibility for yourself. For me, the only reason valid for you to leave your house would be your mom is sick, you are sick, your dog needs to, get, to be taken to the vet or something really, really bad happened. None of this was the case. I don't care if there was a girl there, I don't care if you were drinking. I only care that as a representative of a company advising the nation to stay home and be careful, you do not follow this rule because you don't consider that it applies to you. And to me, there's really no excuse for that. This state of emergency scandal is basically what rushed everything and make it snowball to what we know today. He talked about leaving the group to the members like in March this year, but he was willing to do it after they completed the story tour, which was basically the final act of the big project that they've been doing for four years. Fair enough, that makes sense. That would have been a good way to wrap things up and give the fan closure before leaving the group. Story tour was supposed to be held during the spring this year but because of the pandemic it was cancelled and I think this is why he didn't want to wait so that's his story we don't really know from the agency point of view what is going on because they didn't make a proper statement about about any of this this is what we can gather from the from the press conference so technically he wanted to leave March next year after the story tour pandemic tour cancelled, rush into ending the contract. During this press conference, two things that I noted, I didn't like the fact that he was always trying to play the paddock card. So playing on emotions to maybe divert from the question and giving a clear cut answer. However, he did clear out the name of uh, the agency and the, and the managers, which I thought was really nice of him. He didn't have to do it. Not everybody was doing it before him. So there were rumors that, you know, maybe he had some beef with Taki, with management or with uh, the other members and he cleared this out. So he said that none of this is true. Everybody it was actually very supportive and understanding of his decision. But hold your horses. <laughs> In terms of tea, the fandom was really divided. It was just like the timing was really shit. The way it was announced was really shit. People were angry because of that, which I can understand. And then there are the people on the other side that can be very protective as well, saying that, you know, you should be happy that he's leaving and just maybe it was just a horrible situation. You shouldn't uh, shame him for leaving the agency. And again, I think people are just mixing a bit of everything. Leaving is not the problem. The timing and the way it was done was the problem. For me, none of this matters. For me, the state of emergency was the problem. Because everything is in Japanese and the international fandom get involved on social media, so you have the two extremes when it comes to, to translation that you can read online. What I would say is just try to read as much as possible, gather from different people because people have a different style so you can see the common factors. Obviously, if you can read the words, read the actual words. I sat through the two hours of press conference. I heard the word, I saw the face and the body language, and then I read the translation from three different peoples. And then I also checked like some friends that are fluent to make sure that I understood correctly. And they confirmed to me that no, you understood correctly. He wasn't really apologetic. And one thing that was posted online that made me, un that made me feel validated in my opinion, if I can say so, is Masu, one of the members, posted on his J-Web. So he, sp he posted a little message on his blog 
this one little sentence that was very salty <laughs> basically saying from now on please become a person who can say thank you and sorry now the last event happening with Tegoshi is basically the release of his book called Avalanche that was released on the 5th of August, five days ago when I'm recording this video. The problem with this book, it kind of came out as I will tell you the, the truth, all the truth that you've never known, I will give you all the tea about everybody in the agency. It's like a burn book coming to life, which I find quite ironic considering that after press conference you sounded like very sad and emotional about leaving the agency and you loved everybody, you loved the fans, the managers, the agency. The members and blah 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 and then the burn book is coming out it sounds again a bit confusing in terms of message there were little pictures of a snippet of pages that were posted on Twitter people were reading some translation things snowballed as well because some things were quite offensive or controversial just to make sure that you don't trust the first uh, translation that you see because obviously there can be errors there can be mistranslation or misinterpretation and things like that now that being said there are things that were done in this book that in my opinion are not acceptable I'm recording this on the Monday 10 of August and as of today, Tegoshi has posted a new video on his uh, YouTube channel kind of apologize for the way things were done, which I will put to his credit. For me, it's coming a little too late, but better late than never. Because apparently it was just like written and published into 50k uh, copies in like a month, which I found surreal. It, it seems like a very short amount of time to just write and publish a book. On Twitter, the few things that sparked fire exposing the woman he has slept with by name which is already inappropriate in itself but even more so because these women are still in the same industry and they are working at the moment in the entertainment industry some of them are idols so this is very compromising information that was just published without their consent it can come across also as patronizing and very disrespectful because he basically said that she was underage but there was no way for me to know because I don't even know who she is she was not even at the center in her group okay I guess I will take this with a grain of salt just because the, it happens quite often to my surprise it's kind of weird that because it keeps happening it's not only him it's not it's several people pretty much every year is no one protecting these girls and if not why there was a bit of tea about the former members who left, Yamapi and Rio, that I mentioned previously. They didn't really care about the group and they just decided to leave without, uh, without any consideration for the remaining members or for the fans and things like that. And that sounded to me just like petty revenge. And it's very ironic again because it's coming after admitting that when he joined the group at the very beginning, Yamapi and Rio was or were already superstars. So the group was built around them because they were already extremely popular. And Tegoshi didn't like that. He was kind of jealous. He didn't like it and he hated being part of the group and being uh, having to stand back uh, Yamapi and Rio so saying now after you left Yamapi is working hard but basically he's not as talented as you are and Rio doesn't is not able to make a decision for himself so he's just following other people around that sounds very petty and I don't think this is very justified I find it even more funny saying that you know you still wish them the best and you hope that they are they continue to be successful you can't trash people for two pages and then say that you support and love them I don't think this is okay this is BS my friend there was also his uh, his opinion about Komodo Taiga from Stones and the fact that he said he's 25 now and he's only just debuted this year which is a shame because he has a lot of talent so if he debuted sooner like five years ago he would have been a superstar so people understood that he said that you know basically Taiga will never be a superstar because he's too old for it and I can understand why people would think this way because it kind of feeds into the idea that idols have to debut early in order to be successful I don't think that's a good idea to spread Tegoshi started in the industry at 15 years old and he was he was a junior for barely a year before debuting which is extremely rare in the agency he has very very powerful uh, vocal skills and that's why he was also spotted right away for the group usually juniors would stay into training for at least five years sometimes some of them are training for 13 years before making an actual debut some of them will never debut and then just leave the agency bear in mind that Tegoshi's case was extremely rare it's not a, the usual pattern so for him to say that I debuted very very early and that's why I, I was able to get a good career I don't think this is fair for everybody involved into the agency that is not fair for everyone everyone around you and that gives an image that could be very dangerous meaning we should invest and debut 
minors, which I don't think is a good idea. In my opinion, they should not debut until they are of legal age, so around, let's say, 18 to 20 years old, just because they need the maturity to be able to handle the work, to be able to handle the pressure, to be in the public eye as well, because obviously you are selling a fantasy, you are selling an image, you are an idol, so technically you are selling this uh, this very sexualized image as well for, for the rest of the world. And I don't think minors should be, should be in the spotlight for that. I don't care how you phrase it, this is the idea. And yes, it might not come from a bad place when you wrote, when you wrote it down, but that's also a common problem with Tegoshi. He doesn't think before he speaks. Because he is a public figure, people look up to him, looking at him as a role model. And if your role model is saying that, that could escalate very quickly in a very wrong direction. It's a bit more heartbreaking for, for me knowing that Kyomoto Taiga is also really looking up to, to Tegoshi. He was uh, taking vocal lessons from him, he was always defending him and showing him support even when the stay at home scandal happened, when the leaving the agency happened, that could be very hurtful. Now, in a more serious subject, also why people got very upset. I understand this may be coming from a good place in his heart, but it came out very wrong. He was basically saying that, you know, you have to be able to be strong and positive and just ignore what people are saying about you in order to live a, um, a good life. And if you are struggling basically with mental health, you just have to stay positive and if everybody, everybody was positive like he is, you will be able to accomplish uh, what you want from life. I'm not phrasing it very properly because English is not my native language and I apologize for that, but that's basically why people were mad. Me included. <laughs> the thing you need to know, two talents decided to stop their activities as idol in the same agency that Tagoshi is, so in Johnny's Entertainment, because they were battling with a mental health issue. One member of King and Prince, Genki, and one member from Sexy Zone, So. And they decided to take a break from their idol activities to just focus on their own health which I think is really admirable because not a lot of people is talking about this, especially in Asia. It's, mental health is still considered as a very taboo subject. A lot of people do not consider mental health to be real or to be something that is out of people's control. There is a big stigma on that. Even more so when you are a man, people don't take it seriously, unfortunately. Genki, during a one docu-series called uh, Right on Time, addressed it very openly. He was explaining that he was struggling with it, he was trying to do his best, but sometimes he was just overwhelmed with these, uh, with these issues and he was not sure if, we, if he was able to continue in the long term. The same year this uh, docu-series came out, he decided to take a break and he hasn't resumed any activities as of 2020. I found this admirable because it takes a lot of guts for this young person to put himself on the public eye and say this is what is happening and I don't know how I can handle it. So for someone like Tegoshi to say you just have to be positive, it just belittles everything that Genki was saying, it just invalidate what the people like Genki are going through. This is what we call toxic positivity and toxic positivity can just destroy people from the inside out. We define toxic positivity as the excessive and ineffective overgeneralization of a happy optimistic state across all situations. The process of toxic positivity results in the denial, minimization and invalidation of the authentic human emotional experience. The phrase toxic positivity refers to the concept that keeping positive and keeping positive only is the right way to live your life. Only focusing on positive things and rejecting anything that may trigger negative emotion. And that, in my opinion, is very in line with the message that Tegoshi was trying to vehiculate. Now, one of the persons that Tegoshi mentioned, Kimura Hana. If you don't know, Kimura Hana was on a real TV show and she was 22 years old when she passed away. I say passed away but she actually ended her life after severe depression, after being cyber bullied because people didn't like her, what they were seeing from her on the on the TV show. It's not the first time that it happens in the recent years. A few celebrities have passed away due to mental health issues. The more recent one being a Japanese actor called Haruma Miura. Jong Yoon was always very vocal about his depression. Nobody took him seriously, nobody, including the doctors. Everybody was just saying that this is in your head and you have to be positive about it and you will just like overcome it and the depression just ate him away. Sully, after years of cyberbullying, people were just harassing her and it's never okay to harass people. Even in Tegoshi's case, it's not okay 
if you are upset to just harass him because you disagree with what he did. You can call people out and ask them to be accountable for their mistakes. It is never okay for you to insult people and bully them because you don't agree with what they said or what they do or what they, or what they look like. It is never okay. Guara, harassment and cyberbullying. It was even more shocking in Guara's case because she was being harassed, assaulted and uh, threatened by an ex-boyfriend and people bullied her online when she was the victim. She was already a victim of this ex-boyfriend. She was humiliated in the media and people, instead of showing her support, bullied her on the daily through the social media. At the end of the day, they're struggling with it. Some of them were very vocal about it. Some of them just suffered in silence. You cannot overlook what they went through. If you don't know, it's good for you to educate yourself, but you cannot say that you hold the solution when you don't know what you're talking about. And that's why for me, this type of speech is very dangerous coming from Tegoshi, because he is a public figure, he is a role model. If he doesn't know what he's talking about, he should not be talking about it the way he did. I hope you can understand the two sides of the story. Why people can be supportive and understand that, you know, he didn't mean it this way, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, it's still not an excuse, it's a bit too little too late. If you didn't understand why people were, were making such a fuss about it or, we, or were being very angry about it, I hope you can see the other side of the story. Obviously, it's only snippets that were just uh, picked uh, from the book, but the book is like 272 pages. So obviously, we haven't read everything. I haven't read all of it. So overall, I would say that it's not really a burn book because there's not that much tea in it. I would say that the title of it shouldn't be Avalanche. It should be Tegoshi Yuya has opinion that no one asked for. I don't believe it was also a smart choice for him to do this type of things because he's kind of putting himself into a very bad light in the industry. Why would we work with this person when in fact he might just like dish on her like in a few years? I would find it difficult to work with someone like this and to have any trust in, in someone like this. It looks like petty revenge to just attract attention. It makes Tegoshi look like someone that is delusional, childish and narcissistic. That's not an image that you want for yourself when you're just starting a solo career. Like I said, agree to disagree if you don't share the same opinion, that's perfectly fine. You do you, I will do me, but as far as I'm concerned, I decide to no longer support Tegoshi Yuya. But then again, I'm nobody, so what do I know? Back there.